Greetings and welcome to my grungy ass bead mat. So, I just wanted to do a little bit of resin fun. I kind of want to showcase this one because I've actually had quite a bit of fun with it. Um, all these little cavities and bits have ro ample room to do fun things with. I kind of want to play around and demonstrate a bunch of techniques that I've learned, that I've kind of shown before on previous videos, but I just wanted to make a fun pendant. So, around me, I have what will start as a neatened mise en place, but as these things happen and progress, it's going to be utter chaos, and let's hope I don't get aggravated with myself. So, obviously, I have molds, I have UV resin, I have a palette to mix up my molds, and then I have a bunch of additives and stuff. I have got some stamping thingies, which I love putting stamping tools and stamping on top of resin. And this one is really fun, and I kind of wanted to showcase something on that, so we'll see. I have a stamper. This is a new one from Maniology. It is a reverse stamper, uh, two-part set, and they demonstrated a big thing on shrinking um, shrinking images so that they fit better onto whatever you're working with. So that is nice and spiffy. Uh, obviously a scraper tool to scrape off the paint or the nail polish off. A variety of pigments. I'm going to try to see if I can have some fun with this glow dust from Solar Coder Dust. Got a couple of pigments from TKB Trading. Got this iridescent thing that I got from Sophie and Toffee a long time ago. Speaking of, I have these glitter sets. I have a couple of mica pigments. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use for the base. Just depends on what I'm feeling. I have this alcohol ink that has been severely abused. But I really love it because there's like really teeny tiny micro shimmers in there. And I'm running out. I do want to buy more. Even though, yeah, you can do the same thing with glitter, but this is very teeny tiny micro shimmer. So I'm going to do that. A couple of things of acrylic paint. Black and white. I've got 3.0 uh, and just a regular titanium white. This is going to make things opaque. Because since I'm using UV resin, I can't do too much with opacity. And to help me delve out the pigments, I have my baby spoon, and I have a pokey poke to help me out with mixing. Paper towels! Good for cleanup. And your singular best friend, packing tape. This is just something you absolutely need in your kit for resin. It helps clean up little flecks and pieces and dust and grime that will eventually stick to your silicon molds. It can remove um, nail polish stampings from surfaces you don't want them on. And yeah, it's just really nice to have. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I also have my UV lamp on the side. So, let us have fun with this. I plan on doing something fairy tale themed, and we'll see how this goes. I'm going to start off by just putting in a little bit of crystal clear on the bottom. I'm going to kind of wait for some bubbles, but I want to make that as a base for me to stamp on. That should be good enough. And I'm going to do a little dilute here to do some blue gems with, so I can work on that at the same time. Just gonna mix a little bit of blue on the opposite side. This stuff is super freaking concentrated. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't want it too opaque. That should be good. And while the bubbles are starting to rise from the top, I am going to put the gems inside there so we can get those to cure while I'm working on shit. Q-tips are also very handy to have for wiping off places that you don't want resin.
pop that big ass bubble that is taunting me. There we go. Kind of move the other bubbles aside. Works for me, so I'm gonna cure that for a minute and a half in my new giant laser. Alright, so that's what we've got so far. It's not gonna be too incredibly uh, cured at this point. So be careful not to put fingerprints in it, and if you get a bunch of separate pieces like this, be careful not to jostle and bend it too much. Otherwise, they're going to separate from the mold, and then you're going to have to pour underneath it. Um, especially if you got the hard resins that tend to shrink. This one supposedly cures semi-hard to prevent shrinkage. I haven't had much success with that in the first place, but... Onwards to the stamping, and I'm gonna have to shrink this one. When you are choosing colors for the stamping, you want to be careful of what colors you plan on using. You just want to take some time to think about what you're gonna do for designs. Anyway, figure out what colors you're gonna use in the resin itself, and then what colors of the font or stamping is going to contrast it so that you can actually, you know, see it. I'm going to be using a purple for the big stone, so a gold would be cool, or a bright blue that would match the, the stones on the outside. So in my arsenal, I have a greenish gold, a pure gold, and a copper. This is going to determine what I'm going to use for the backing as well. Hmm towards the coppery orange, although the green is nice. Orange gold would go with the tri gold. I really don't like the yellow. I know that. So, the green would clash with that. Eh, copper. We're going with copper. Also, be sure to clean up as you go, otherwise you are going to be very angry very quickly. Just do a bit of stamping. That's what I want. I'm going to use some tape to just clean up and only pick up what I want. Now, since these are words, I'm going to need to reverse stamp it, because otherwise, since I'm going front to back, it's gonna need to reflect. So if I stamped this in as it is, it's gonna read um, normal from this side, but when you flip over the pendant, it's not gonna show up properly. So, let's see, I'm gonna test to see if I can fit that. I can, actually, so um, that's nice. So I'm just gonna take the other stamper and get this cat hair off. Stamp that on there. Oh god, that didn't work. Well, time to try again. Luckily, I have acetone and cotton pads, so we're gonna undo our mistakes. Alright, great success. Removing this out of the way. I'm gonna do a rolling technique to make sure I get this in the place that I want. Kind of. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge. We're just gonna mash. Mash. <gasps> it worked! Look at how well that worked. I am so impressed. Oh man, I also picked up one of my gems, but. I might just redo those, because I have enough resin. Alright, so that is it so far. It's a little off-kilter, but, you know, I ain't perfect. It's good enough for me. Uh, before I do the next layer, I am going to put a little bit of sparkle. That is too much, but we'll work with it. 
There's my sturdy stick. Close enough. So we're just gonna put a tiny thin layer on top. Close enough. Now since I have so much, I'm gonna put a thin drop on top of these because it'll look cute anyway. Now I'm gonna cure this, and we'll work on the next layer. Alright. Waste not, what not, I also made some shaker bits, because... Uh, reasons. Alright. So my next bit, I'm going to do another stamping thing. I think I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, but I really wanted to use this cagey thing again. Rib cage. That's what it is. All right, so hopefully we can get somewhere. Nice. Kind of quickly, I'm gonna try and shrink it down. This ain't working very well. Yeah. Coordination. Huh? Well, I shrunk it down a little bit. We're going with it. Alright, take this bit, oh, got it all over me, and we mash a little bit, there we go, works for me, now we gotta do a bit of cleanup, and all of my stones stayed in place, hooray! Gonna do a bit of cleanup. I am done with my stamping. Alright, so some cleanup achieved. I'm going to work, hopefully delicately, to get rid of all the nail polish we don't want. That may fuck up in the final reveal, but we'll see what happens. Alright. Dragging out one of my cups for this one. As this one's gonna get complicated. Add some glitter. Let's use these tiny chonkies. Little iridescence never hurt anybody. And a healthy dollop of purple. Yeah, we'll try that. Make these sticky. There it is. Ooh, that makes a very nice color. Before it has a chance to leak into the bottom, I'm going to cure it. Alright, nice. Do one more thin layer. Because I forgot to put the glow powder, and we'll see how that works. This stuff is incredibly micro-thin, so... Wearing a mask is probably a good idea. That's probably way too much. Thing. 
Now this bitch will glow. Oh yeah, way too much. I want another layer of glitter because let's add these the glow stuff seemed to not make that very visible let's try the bigger chonkies That's a little better. Alright. I'm gonna cure this and then figure out what to do with the rest of this mess. Alright, pent ultimate layer. Gonna have to be pretty careful with this because I'm using micas. And micas tend to make things really opaque. So, I ended up using bronze gold. Start with that. Mmm, isn't that pretty? This is too much. That'll have to be the best I can do. What I'm going to do is cure this in layers, and I will be back. Alright, it's nice and appropriately hard. I am praying that the layers in the center have also cured. So, I'm going to add a little coating of black, hoping it sticks, to make sure that... Everything is nice and opaque, and to the colors that I want. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to sprinkle in some mica powder to kind of match the color to it. Black 3.0, it might not even matter, because I don't think any light can... Oh well, it's kind of working. Yeah, okay, that's not bad, it's just real thick. I don't know if I want to loosen it up. Maybe some water, I don't want to put more black in it. Nice. Perfect. Alright, I'm then going to take some super glue to mattify the surface because anytime you put this stuff on a shiny surface, you don't like it. I have experience with that from a number of rhinestones, which was very annoying to me. 
Uh, every time I tried to glue these and use super glue, they got stuck, and I was not pleased. Alright, well, that nozzle ain't gonna work, so we're just gonna do it the stupid way. Alright. I'm going to sacrifice a paintbrush to smear that all around. Doesn't need a thick coat, just something to act as a primer. And we can rub off any excess. Alright, now that is tacky and mattified, in theory, this will go paint. That's better. One layer. Alright. So I'm going to add this in multiple layers. Then I am going to add a thin layer of clear right on top. And we will finally be ready for the final reveal. Alright, so now we have the final reveal. Let's see how many mistakes, bubbles, whatever has happened. Be careful not to superglue too many things, otherwise it's not going to be a good time for your mold. Whoopsie. And I think I wrecked it. That's not too too bad, I need to do a coat of something clear on top in order to fix that. But yeah, I'm gonna pick off some silicon clear coat it, and I will post a picture of the final product over on Discord. So if you're not there, be sure you have joined the Discord to talk to a bunch of other peoples that are in the beating world and just have a bunch of fun. So it looks like to me I need to get another mold. If you'd like to know where I got this mold, I will leave a link down in the description below. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this kind of resiny, free form kind of style. Um, if you want me to live stream it, be sure to tell me in the comments and see if maybe I can do more of these in the resin stuff. But I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing, doing some free form things. And yes, so. And thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are awesome, and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you would like to get exclusive tutorials once per month, feel free to check out my Patreon page or on my YouTube membership. There's a little join button in the bottom that you can get the exclusive tutorials once per month, and you can come join us there. Thank you all so much for joining me, and of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.